Welcome to this Panel Pilot Ace tutorial video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the RS-232 on the Panel Pilot Ace. So before we begin going into too much detail, uh, I should probably tell you a couple of things about how the RS-232 on the Panel Pilot Ace works. Firstly, it's important to understand that the RS-232 at the moment is purely ASCII based, so you won't be sending integers floats as anything other than an ASCII string. Uh, that makes it difficult and uh, non-ideal for machine-to-machine -machine communication but if you do control both bits of hardware you can make it work uh, quite easily uh, as long as you're willing to sacrifice some of the bitrate. We do intend to add machine-to-machine -machine communication and I'll explain to you how that will work in a bit, but um, for the moment you are limited to ASCII communication with predefined uh, delimiters as well as endpoints. So in order to use this you will need to connect your device up to, uh, in my example I'm going to use a terminal application on the PC, obviously you could connect it directly to your RS-232 device uh, I've got a RS-232 to USB converter which I've got plugged into a Panel Pilot Ace development kit here which brings out the RS-232 ports uh, otherwise the connectors are on the back of the Panel Pilot Ace uh, you can take a look at the data sheet for more details on that okay so let's get started looking at the elements then that you'll need to create your first RS-232 application so firstly uh, there, there are three main elements. You've got one hardware element which defines the hardware protocol. You've got one, or sorry, two functional elements. Uh, now these, uh, one is for a send and one is for a receive. So I'll talk you through all of these individually first and then we'll put them all together and come up with a quick application that we can use an example. So we'll see I've already got a serial COM port in here. Uh, this can be found under the hardware elements so here you go, you've got Serial RS-232 and Serial RS-485 uh, so I'm currently running the beta version of the software, you may not see RS-485 if you are on the standard V2 software uh, but don't worry that'll be coming soon and the elements work in almost identical ways so uh, for simplicity's sake I'm just going to talk you through the 232 COM port uh, but as I say the 485 is, is virtually identical Okay, so going through the properties, we have your name, that's st completely standard. Channel, now this is for future support if we have more than one channel for the RS-232. Uh, you'll see at the moment there's no drop down because there is only one channel available. Uh, service type, so this is an interesting, an interesting property. So native refers to panel pilot to panel pilot communication. Now what this enables the user to do uh, is to talk to another panel pilot ace and because we're talking to another panel pilot ace we can format the data in in different ways. So for example we can add verification, CRC checks etc uh, because both ends know what what is being done. Uh, however Today I'm going to talk you through the terminal application, which is probably the most the most common application you're going to need to know about. Uh, so we're going to leave that on terminal for now. So now you've got all of your standard RS-232 properties. So board rate, it's obviously the um, speed at which the data is sent. Now if you're using an RS-232 to USB adapter it's highly unlikely that this is important but if you're going directly into RS-232 uh, you may well need to set this to the correct value so you should be aware uh, the device you're connecting to should specify what board rate is necessary uh, the same for the parity and stop and, and flow control bits or sorry variables uh, these are all predetermined you should be aware of them if you're connecting to another RS-232 device. Okay, so moving down. Next up you'll see terminal mode. 
so again this is probably something that that could easily confuse someone looking for the first time uh, it's not a standard property for RS-232 so what this does is it enables us to control how the data appears so there's two main types here you've got raw data and prompt types so raw data is what we're going to use if we're talking to a device if we don't care what we see we're not looking at it ourselves uh, whereas prompt I mean that's going to look like almost a, a Linux terminal where it prompts you to enter data uh, fixed prompt means that the prompt stays still and a scroll up with prompt means that the data scrolls down the screen as it goes uh, I'll give you an example of those so you can see exactly what they look like uh, when we're when we get to that point uh, so as I say single and multiple raw data basically refers to whether we're expecting more than one variable to be transmitted over the RS-232 uh, I would normally just just stick with multiple raw data uh, unless I wanted a prompt in which case I, I prefer the the fixed prompt but whatever works for you uh, and as I say I'll give you an example of these later so you can actually see how they look so if I select multiple raw data here this will give us a bit more bit more information we can fill out so now as I was saying earlier you need predefined terminators and separators for the RS-232 communication uh, so these are going to indicate the split point between variables uh, you can think of it almost like a comma separated list although the separator doesn't have to be a comma so firstly the terminator so you can specify for both send and receive um, unfortunately you can't specify anything at the moment we have a predefined list of terminators and separators however it is in the long run our intention to allow you to specify one of these um, but you should find most most terminators and separators you would expect in this list so it shouldn't be a problem I hope okay so what these do is a terminator specifies the end of a send string so to give you an example you would start a command off uh, if in in actually no I, I'll wait until we get into the send receive it'll make more sense there but, but the terminator specifies this is the end of this command and the separator is used to separate out different variables within one command okay and the enable send complete uh, variable here is it allows the application to report when the send is complete uh, so this is something most most people probably won't won't need um, and if you need any more detail on it uh, you can always email in and ask happy to tell you a bit more about it but um, I think for the majority of you it's something we can just uh, gloss over here okay so next up I'm going to talk to you about the function elements so I think the the best thing to start with would be an RS-232 send so here you go it's actually a serial port send so this yeah, it's, it's an interesting interface we've got so you select your your serial port obviously we've only got one so that's quite a quite a simple property selection now you'll see this box of send values so the way this works is basically you're going to send a list of variables over over the serial com port in ascii format so what we can do is we can either click on the add button here we can double click here or we can right click and add uh, and you'll see there's a pre message and a post message string that you can enter so if you wanted to prefix something onto the value you're sending or add something to the end of it uh, you can do so here uh, and then you can simply select the value you want to send so you'll notice you can actually send a hexadecimal value here um, so there you go uh, you can also send pretty much any data type and it will it will convert that through to a string and then send it uh, suffixed and prefixed by the specified values so what I'm gonna do here uh, let's think of something useful to send I'm going to send the value of an analog input 
so here we go we've got analog input on channel one and I want this function to send that value so I can select the analog inputs voltage here uh, and I want to just make it obvious what that is so we can say voltage one and then we'll pre suffix it with volts there we go so now whenever I call this serial send function it's gonna send voltage one the value followed by volts uh, and because we've got multi here I'm gonna show you how you do two channels so we'll do voltage two as well here okay and this is analog input one well there we go so let me just rename these because it's confusing otherwise input one input two serial send inputs okay so another thing to be aware of is that this isn't going to be continuously spitting out data this this send inputs has to be called by something much like an action set rule um, so what we're going to do is we're going to need something to trigger it so as per usual this could be a button this could be a timer this could be a property trigger um, so the best thing I think in this situation I'm, I'm going to use a button uh, so let's go grab ourselves a rectangle to use as a button okie doke Let's resize that to something sensible. Uh, what do we reckon? That's a bit small. 120. Ooh. There we go. That'll do. Uh, so by pushing this rectangle, uh, I'm going to want to send those input data that that input data out over the RS232. Okay. So let's create the button now. button send um, we're going to link that to the rectangle and we want to specify that when it's clicked we send inputs okay so just to give you a quick rundown of the format that these are going to be sent in so you push that button and then it will send the first value so voltage one the actual value the V letter for this for the units then it will send our RS232 separator so you can see in here or sorry our send separator I should be more specific that's a space I actually want it to come out as a comma um, then it will send the next value so voltage to the value followed by volts and then because there are no more values it will send the send terminator so we've got carriage return line feed here okay so that's what we're expecting out now I will in fact I will test that now so you can see here I've got my device connected already so I'm just gonna upload this project there we go lovely so I've got a nice big button on the screen now and I'm just gonna push that button but before that I'm going to open up my terminal application here. So I'm using TerraTerm, but there are plenty of terminal applications out there that you could use. I'm going to connect to, so this is something to be wary of. You don't want to connect to the Panel Pilot Ace device. Okay, you want to connect to your USB to serial com or whatever it is you're using. Uh, that is if you're using a terminal. Your device, if you if you plugged your device in, then that's that's fine. Um, so there you go, so now I'm connected to the, the appropriate channel uh, and now I'm simply going to push the button and there you go so voltage, the value, the V, comma, my separator voltage, voltage 2, the value, and V ok, uh, and so it's obviously entered a carriage return new line there taking me to the next line so that's what I would expect because that was my send terminator okay so that that works as expected brilliant 
So coming back here now, it's time to look at the RS232 receive function. Okay, so let's add a serial receive function element to the screen. Now this is where things get a little bit different, a little less obvious. So the serial send is it is maybe intuitive. Uh, the receive is, but there's a couple of things you have to understand about it before it makes sense. Okay, so let's just talk through the properties of this element here. So first we select a serial port. Okay, so you've got a name. Now the name actually becomes a bit more important than just a variable name here. So by default, this name is what's going to be effectively the trigger of this receive function. So in order to determine what what serial receive element handles uh, commands over the RS232, you need an identifier at the beginning. So this name by default acts as that command, if you will. So for example, if I had the name A, by sending A followed by a separator, followed by a value, followed by a terminator, it would immediately recognize this function as the one that had to handle those values. Okay, um, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, th th that's not very helpful in my opinion because the name should represent what, what the element does. It shouldn't be used for that in particular. So that's why we have this receive alias name. So let me just put a, a sensible value in here. So receive uh, value. And then what I want to do is actually use this alias name to specify the command that triggers this. So for example, I'm going to, to name the command update. OK. And so now by sending the word update followed by the separator, the, the receive separator to be specific, that can be different to the send separator, uh, followed by however many values I specify here, ASCII values of course, uh, it will update what I tell it to. So let me just give you an example here. So the receive values, uh, these are basically telling it where to store the values that it receives. So, for example, uh, let me just create somewhere to store this. Now, don't forget, it's going to be coming in as a string. So, I wouldn't recommend storing it directly into a number variable, for example. Uh, the best way to handle these received values is to store them as a string and then use an action to convert them, if you will, into whatever you need. Uh, so what I will do is I'll give you an example here. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to actually put the value directly into a text box so so that we can see exactly what we're receiving. So this is our text Oops. so I'll receive value uh, and it's going to be going to put some dashes in it by default so we can identify it uh, and stretch it across the screen. And then just align the text to the center. Okay, so we'll have dashes until we receive a specific value. Uh, okay, so coming back in here, we are going to store this receive value. So we're only going to receive one value uh, for the sake of argument here. You could receive as many as you like as long as they're separated correctly uh, using the receive separator. Uh, and I want to store that value within the text property of this text box. So now whenever I receive the word update followed by the separator, followed by any string, followed by the terminator, the value I sent will be displayed in this text box here. Okay, so now there's just one more thing to look at and that is this action element at the bottom here. So this action basically allows you to process that data. So this will be run once the download or the receive has been completed, the values have been stored, and then you can run an action. So for example, this action could take that text value we've just downloaded and put in the text box, 
and do something with it. It could convert it into a number variable, which which I could do now. So let's let's do that. Uh, so if I create a number variable, so as I said before, do not download or do not put a number into the receive box. Uh, it it may not handle the conversion correctly. Put it or send it to a string and then use the action to convert that string into a number or something else simply simply by setting the number variable equal to the text box. So I'll do that now. Uh, so I'll call this received number. Okay. Uh, and then we'll have an action set rule. Action process receive. Okay. And all we're going to do using this is set that number variable equal to the contents of our text box, which will be equal to what we received. Okay, and this action set rule actually handles the conversion for us. So if, if the types don't match, like in this case, it will try to convert that string to a number. And if it fails, it will turn it into an, a NAN, not a number. Um, but what we don't want is to download it and try and store it straight into a number. And then if it's not a number, data could be lost. We don't know. This this is just the safest way of doing it. Okay. <coughs> so what I'll do now is I will run that action. So action process received. So it'll, when the data is received, the value gets stored in the text box. The action is called. The action then sets the variable equal to the value of that text box. Okay, so there's no way for me to really show you it at the moment, but just take my word for it that uh, that that variable will be getting updated. Okay, so I guess it's time to demonstrate this. Oh, oh sorry, there's one more property, the enabled property. Uh, so this can be changed at runtime through an action set rule. So you could start the receive disabled. Uh, you could enable different receives receives at particular points. Okay, so all, all that does is determine whether it's listening for this particular uh, receive function. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to upload that new application. Okay, uh, oh, and let me just check what I'd specified as my receive separator here. Okay, so the receive separator is a space. So I probably should have changed it to a comma, but we'll we'll work with a space for now. Uh, and the terminator is just the carriage return. Okay, so I've got my terminal open again here. Uh, and so just to check, my alias is update. So update. You can't see me typing because I'm not in terminal mode. Uh, so because I'm using raw data, there's no need for it to mirror the data back at me to see. If you have terminal mode selected, and I'll show you this in a sec, you'll actually be able to see the data you're typing. Okay, so space. I'm just going to type hello world without a space, but with a capital W because a space is a separator at the moment, and I don't want to get that confused. And then I'm going to hit enter. Uh, and as you can see, I've now got the hello world text written on my screen in that text box. So there you go, RS232 receive working as expected. Okay, uh, so now as promised, I just want to take you through the different terminal types so you can see exactly what's going on in each of them. So all the raw data, so single raw data simply removes uh, the separator from the send, so we're not expecting more more than one bit of data to be sent. Um, I, I don't see the point in using that over multiple raw data, so I, I generally stick with multiple raw data. So what I'll show you instead is the scroll up with prompt. Uh, okay, and I'm just going to upload that to the device now so that we can see it. Okay, and now if I oh, I disconnected, so if I just reconnect to the device there, uh, so if I hit enter there, you'll see it's given us a prompt now. Uh, so this is 
it's telling us that we can enter data and now you'll see if I enter data so update space test enter data has been entered my screen has been updated and I can see exactly what was going on there and you'll notice that the terminal new terminal line has gone on the line below that so when I show you scroll up uh, fixed scroll prompt uh, you will see how that differs um, but basically it, it operates the same it's just a more user-friendly way when you're using a PC terminal and you're actually looking at it okay so I'm just gonna go back in here and now I'm gonna select fixed prompt and I'm gonna upload that to the device okay uh, and so I should still be connected so there we go now I didn't clear my screen but the way this works is that prompt is gonna stick at the top so I just clear my buffer there there's my prompt at the top uh, and I'm going to once again update space value enter so my screens updated and that prompt remains fixed at the top there so you can't see your previous history uh, but you don't get the mess of you know scrolling down the screen as you go okay so that hopefully gives you a brief understanding of just what those those types mean uh, don't forget if you're talking machine to machine uh, so you've got another embedded device listening you probably want the raw data it probably doesn't want a load of data spat back at it uh, as you're going so those prompts while they look nice to us will not probably be a good idea but I'll, I'll leave that up to you uh, and that is all for this RS-232 Panel Pilot Ace tutorial video. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to email us. I will put this example application on the website so that you can give it a go yourselves. Thank you very much for watching.